Welcome to our third lesson in our Introduction to Material Structure course. Today, we'll be focusing on polymer materials, specifically we'll be defining different elements of basic polymeric chains and talking about how these chains and side groups arrange themselves in our bulk material. Polymers can be split into two general categories. The first is thermoplastics, which soften upon heating and harden upon cooling. An example of this is polyethylene, which makes up milk bottles. The second are thermosets, which have covalent bonds or crosslinks between our polymeric chain materials. Now, this changes a number of things about our polymer, but one major difference is now thermosets simply burn when they're heated up. Think of an epoxy resin. Once it's hardened and cured, it doesn't soften upon heating. Let's start with basic elements of polymer chains. I have a schematic of a polymeric chain shown here. We can see our backbone, made of carbon atoms that are bonded together by covalent bonds. This backbone has side groups, notated here by the letter R. These side groups can be atoms or molecules. We'll see some examples in a minute. Now, the word polymer means many mers. The word mers is described from the Greek word meros, meaning part. So, our polymer is made of many parts. This is a monomer. This is the small organic molecule that's the basis for our polymer. These monomers are reacted together using different techniques that we won't cover in this course. And then we get our polymer. So, our polymer is made of repeating units, like the one shown here. This might be easier to understand with a real-world example. Let's take polyethylene that we talked about in the intro to this course. The monomer for polyethylene is the hydrocarbon ethylene, with a chemical composition of C2H4. This is reacted together in the proper conditions to give us this, our polyethylene chain. Our backbone is our carbon, and our side groups are single hydrogen atoms. Therefore, our repeating group looks like this. Sometimes a polymer chain might be written out like this, where our repeat unit is in brackets with subscript n. This n indicates the length of our chain. Now, remember that this is a simple drawing that does not take into account our bonding constraints. Our covalent hybridized carbon-carbon bonds are directional, which means we don't have this 180 degree angle. Instead, it's closer to 109 degrees, like this. Now, we said we can change our side groups. We also talked about Teflon in our introduction. We can see the structure and its repeating units here. We've swapped our hydrogens for fluorines. Now, for both polyethylene and Teflon, the repeating unit has two carbons, both with the same side groups. Why do we bother showing two carbons? Well, some systems, like polyvinyl chloride or PVC, have uneven side groups. The structure for PVC is shown here. We have three hydrogen side groups and one chlorine side group per repeat unit. Side groups don't have to be just atoms. For example, polypropylene has an ethylene side group along with some hydrogens. Now, these side groups can have multiple configurations depending on how they arrange themselves within the chain, which is called stereoisomerism, or on what side of the chain they arrange themselves on, which is called geometric isomerism. Unfortunately, we don't have time to discuss these today, but since we're dealing with three-dimensional bulk materials, we need to be mindful of how these side groups arrange themselves. We also need to be mindful of how our polymers arrange themselves in the bulk material. We have the linear polymer structure, where our chains resemble what's often referred to as cooked spaghetti. Here, we find our van der Waals or hydrogen bonds from lesson one between the chains, weakly binding them to one another. When we have linear polymeric chains, we can have a high degree of chain stacking, leading to what's called crystallites. These areas lead to polymers that are semi-crystalline in nature, which alters our polymeric properties. We can also have branched polymers, which again are bonded together by our secondary bonds. The difference is the branched polymers can't pack as closely to one another compared to our linear polymers. Not only does this lead to minimal crystallization, but it also reduces the density of our polymer. 
For example, our plastic bags from the introduction are made of a low-density polyethylene that has this branch structure. High-density polyethylene, made with a linear structure, is used to reduce wear and friction in total knee replacements. Quite a different application for a change in structure. We can also have covalent bonds between our polymer chains. These are called crosslinks. We mentioned our crosslinks at the beginning of this lesson as a difference between thermosets and thermoplastics. Our thermosets don't soften because of these covalent bonds. We need just as much energy to break the covalent bonds between the chains as we do within the chain. So they all break at roughly the same time. The degree of crosslinking between our chains can vary from low to high. As we get to high degrees of crosslinks, we have what's called a network polymer. An example of a polymer with a low degree of crosslinking is rubber, which I can stretch and manipulate as an elastomer. A polymer with a high degree of crosslinking is epoxy. I can't stretch epoxy in the same way I can stretch rubber, yet they're both crosslinked polymers. So, our degree of crosslinking dramatically impacts our performance. And with that, we've come to the end of a very terminology-heavy lesson. I know we've talked about a lot of terms, but since polymers can be so varying in their structure, their composition, how their side groups and chains are arranged within the bulk polymer, we need a lot of different terms in order to be able to describe the differences between them. I highly encourage you to use the note-taking sheet from our course website in order to help you keep the terms straight. And with that, we're down to our final lesson. This one is focused on composite materials. So stay tuned to learn how composites are slightly different than the other material families we've discussed so far.